on today's podcast. Well, the Holy Ghost is what uses you anyway and flows through you in those gifts. So where I I look at that, all those gifts is available for me to be used through. Now, will I be using all those gifts? Not necessarily. But does it mean I don't have the gift? No. Mm -hmm. It just means that when you're filled with the power of the Holy Ghost, when He wants to use you in one of those particular gifts, Mm -hmm. are you available? Now, that's going to be the answer right there. Am I available? All right, so I've got a couple of deep-hearted questions here. First one's pretty deep, I think. (laughs) Okay. What is your favorite TV show growing up? What was your favorite TV show growing up? Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo. That's a good one. Good. <laughs> I like that one. Leave it to Beaver. Leave it to Beaver. That was a good one too. Yeah. I think mine was Rugrats. Rugrats. <laughs> yeah. See, now we're seeing age difference here. You know, I love Not mysteries. Not too much between me and you. But I love mysteries. So Scooby Doo. Yeah. You know, I was I'm a mystery Scooby Doo one too. That one and what was that one called? Not. I didn't ever watch Cat Dog. Do y'all remember Cat Dog? No, that you're, was you're, that was the way. That was yeah. Which I, I had children. Your, yeah, your you know your age in that yeah. time frame, but I don't remember. I don't. I didn't. I watched it all a the shows bit, but, much because yeah. that that you know back when we was growing up, Saturday morning was the only time you got to watch. Yeah, cartoons. cartoons. I mean that was it, or your you know your mm-hmm. favorite show, which mm-hmm. Leave It to Beaver I think can maybe come on every day. I can't remember, but yeah. Uh, but like Saturdays was the only day you could watch cartoons. That was oh, it. Yeah. You probably don't even know. know I, knew okay. I knew that. I knew that. And then they come out with the Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon. I mean, all these different ones that they've got now. So Yeah, I will say me and Mom always watched Monk on Saturdays growing up. So that's I I still watch that today. So that, I guess, would be my favorite. Not cartoon, but (laughs) it works. Okay, so this next one's very deep to me. It's a very important question. (laughs) It means a lot to me. (laughs) What is the best type of cheese? (laughs) Best type of what? Cheese. <laughs> it's a very deep question. So you're speaking my love language now. When you start talking about food, I mean, I, I can answer these really quick. Kobe Jack, I guess, for oh, me. That was mine, That's too. Good. Kobe Jack. Provolone. Pro- what? Provolone. provolone. I've never heard of I that. I like provolone. Yeah. It's kind it's of a mild cheese. Sandwich. It's really good on. Mom loves, It's I call it monster cheese, but it's monster, monster, monster cheese. cheese. Mom, That's mom's favorite, but... What is yours? Did you say? Mine's Colby Jack. Colby Jack, okay. Yeah. Good. Or Pepper Jack. Or Pepper Jack. All the Jacks. All the different Jacks. <laughs> but, yeah. So, speaking of all the deep questions, we're going to have, we got a little bit of a deep topic today, I feel like. It's going to be really good. I'm excited for the conversation. Um, so, we'll just kind of jump right in and go with it. The main question that we're asking is Are you a bad Christian if you don't speak in tongues? And that's the direction that we're going with. And when we say speaking in tongues, it's also like unknown languages and things like that. Um, so we can just jump into it. Whoever wants to go first. Well, my answer to that is no. Yeah. You're not a bad Christian for not having it. I feel like it, it, I, th- I feel like people kind of get the tongues in the purpose of the Holy Ghost confused. Mm-hmm. The tongues to me is a heavenly language that God's given us that whenever we're in our private room or a private prayer place that's our communication with god Mm -hmm. nobody can understand it even including the enemy but the holy ghost what's the purpose of the holy ghost Mm -hmm. to me i think that you need to seek not the tongues seek the holy ghost and the purpose of the holy ghost Mm -hmm. what is the purpose of the holy ghost what is his main reason to come to the earth yeah absolutely Mm-hmm. What, what do you think? Oh, uh, yeah, when you talk about that, I don't think that, um, you know, you're not a bad Christian uh, if you don't speak in tongues. And I think a lot of people may not even understand what we're saying when we say that because of just the doctrinal differences of so many different religions and you're like, we're speaking in tongues, what are they even talking about? Well, mm-hmm. there's a gift of the Holy Spirit that is given to us called the gift of tongues. And that, that is to speak in an unknown, unknown language Mm-hmm. Uh, or a tongue that that is like you said not understandable to men or to uh, the the Satan or the devil or 
uh, only God can understand that language. That's a gift that He gives to us to speak. And so when we receive the, the Holy Spirit into our lives, that is one of the gifts that is evident. You know, we see that in Acts 2, yeah. where He said that He, that he you know, um, filled them and the, and the tongues of fire set upon each and every one of them, and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, that at that time, they were speaking the language of people to hear because people began to hear that language in their own own ear they understood what they was was saying in that but then there's the gift of the of tongues that he was talking about that's a prayer language that mm -hmm. that uh paul and different ones in at uh, in acts asked many times have you received the holy spirit after you have believed you know mm -hmm. and they were believers they understood and so when i when i think of this topic and i, I don't want to take up too much time on this because i want you to share too with what you what you want to share, Sister Connie, on this too, but but uh, you know he he was giving them and saying this is a language, this is something that that is going to enhance, that's going to mm -hmm. bring some fullness to your walk with God, yeah. that's going to help you uh, in some areas of your life. And so, have you received this gift since you believed? He, you're not a bad Christian if you yeah. did not receive mm -hmm. or yeah. uh, you know have this gift of, of the tongues in your life. And so, uh, I think it's something we should desire. Yeah. Right. That yeah. we should want to have because it's going to enhance, it's mm -hmm. going to fulfill, you know, it's going to bring some fullness to your relationship with God. Yeah, because it is a gift. You know, yeah. when whenever I had gotten saved, uh, I had heard, you know, the preaching of the Holy Ghost. Well, I didn't understand it because you know I, my background was was not a Christian background. I wasn't mm -hmm. raised up that way, yeah. but I started hungering that. And to me, whenever the, the Lord has offered me a gift, not mm -hmm. just God, if anybody's going to offer me a gift, yeah. I'm going to take that gift. I'm yeah. going to want that gift. Well, this is a gift that, that Jesus said, you know, it's, it's important that I leave so I can send you the comforter. Yeah. He wanted us to have this gift. He, he desires for us to have this gift, so, so much so that he's, he made a point to tell the disciples, i got to go. Hmm. So I can send this gift to you. So I feel like whenever you start searching and, and serving the Lord and, and becoming more hungry to, to know more about God and about His character like we talked before, mm -hmm. knowing God's character, well, Holy Ghost is part of God's character, and you're yeah. going to want this. Yeah. You're going to want this, this, this extra benefit mm -hmm. that God is offering to you and I. And, and uh, you know, the, the, to me, the purpose of the Holy Ghost is to give you strength yeah. when you cannot do it on your own. Mm -hmm. And I, at times, you know, in my walking God, even though I've served God all these years, there is still times that there is, you know, I'm a Martha, everybody knows that, and I do things on my own, and I, I you know, but there's days that I can't yeah. do it on my own, and I need that comforter. I need that strength. I need the Holy Ghost to come in and, just help me overcome some things in my own life or overcome situations or whatever is going. But it's a it's a gift that God wants you and I to hunger after. Yeah. He wants you and I to have because it is empowers you. Yeah. You know, and the the tongues is just the evidence of it. Yeah. Yes. That's good. The way that mom explained it to me, it's it was a good analogy because it's stuck with me all these years, was um your Christian walk with God is like the chocolate chip muffin. Like there's the, the chocolate, the chocolate chip, chip muffin. muffin? Okay. Yes. Like I use an I like analogies, like they're good. And then the the <laughs> giftings of the spirit and the what I was because I was asking her about speaking in tongues because I had never experienced that yet at that time. And she said, Addie, the your Christian walk is the muffin. This the speaking in tongues is the icing on top of the muffin. It's the extra that mm -hmm. makes it even better. You love the chocolate chip muffin, it's awesome, it's great, but it's the extra on top the what the not i guess not the better but it makes the whole well, it makes the whole better. cupcake <laughs> you know it com makes the it's whole complete cupcake. yeah yes. it completes it yes. yeah it's the fullness when we talk mm -hmm. about yeah. you know it's the fullness of, of god it's the fullness of the godhead yeah. god the father god the son god the holy spirit i mean he wants us to have all of the gifts you know yeah. we talked about this in another podcast about how that christ gave gifts to the church how that yeah. god has given gifts to the church and the holy spirit wants to give us gifts, you know, mm -hmm. too, as well. And one of them is the gift of tongues yeah. and, and speaking in this unknown language. But it doesn't make you a bad Christian if you yeah. don't operate yeah. in these gifts. It's just you're missing out. Yeah. You're losing mm -hmm. out on some things in your walk with God. And so I, I challenge people to desire these spiritual gifts. Paul even 
said that to us in 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter. In fact, I have it right here. I didn't bring my glasses with me today, <laughs> so I'm having to do this dumb number here. He said, but pursue love and earnestly desire spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. And so he, he's, he's challenging us too here. I think it's important that we all desire these spiritual mm -hmm. gifts because they're going to enhance your walk with God mm -hmm. and enhance uh, not only that, but the body of Christ. It's going to yeah. enhance. When you talk about the gifts of knowledge and the, and the gifts right. of wisdom and the gifts of you know of of, of of healing and, and miracles and, and the discerning of spirits, all these different gifts that the Holy Spirit, these nine different gifts that He gives to us, these are to enhance our spiritual walk with God and to also encourage us as other mm -hmm. believers. And also it's a sign unto the unbeliever yeah. that mm -hmm. there is a supernatural. And that's why I think most people shy away from these gifts is because they don't understand the supernatural. Yeah. And it's beyond our abilities. It's beyond us. This gift of tongues is beyond. I, mm -hmm. I don't understand it. Yeah. I don't get it. And I've I've been raised in this. You know, you come from a background that it wasn't raised right. in mm -hmm. uh, this this doctrinal stance that we take. You know, of of the gifts of tongues, and that's not just a doctrinal stance. It's something yeah. that I truly believe and 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 cherish. Yeah. This this gift of the Holy Spirit, of the fullness of God, of of, re of receiving that. And so it, when I grew up in this, so it was something that was. Um, that I didn't understand as a child altogether, but just being around it, it was just kind of almost uh, yeah. imparted yeah. in a sense. But I had to come to that place in my life that, okay, I, I desire mm -hmm. this in my life. And then the moment that I did receive the Holy Spirit into my life with the gifts of tongues and all these different gifts, it just, it just mm -hmm. helped. It mm -hmm. was a, full, a fullness. And that's why Jesus said it's expedient that I go away. Because if I don't, the comforter will not come. And so... Yeah. When he comes, he says, I'm going to lead you and guide you into all truth. I'm going to bring things into your remembrance. I'm going to give you these right. gifts. Yeah. He comes with a whole bunch of stuff yeah. that he wants to give us. So. Right. Yeah. That's good. Okay. So going back to that original question of, am I a bad Christian if I don't speak in tongues? I wanted to bring some scripture into it because I've, this is something that I'm, I'm, I guess I'm passionate about because I really like to learn about the Holy Spirit because I never really understood him. And when I actually actually put the work in and really have studied it out, it's like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> but anyway, um, in 1 Corinthians, I'm going back to chapter 12. You mentioned 14. Yeah. But, um, 12, 13, and 14. 12, 13, all, and 14 are all, yes. Yes, are, are dealing with this, yeah. the gift of the Holy Spirit. Um, but on verse 28 through 31, I believe, yeah, it, it says here's some of the parts of God's uh, has appointed for the church, parts of the Holy Spirit. I believe. Um, and then it says, first are apostles, second are prophets, third are teachers, then those who do miracles, those who have the gifts of healing, those who can help others, those who have the gifts of leadership, those who speak in unknown languages. And then verse 29, it says, are we all apostles? Are we all prophets? Are we all teachers? Do we all have the power to do miracles? Do we all have the gift of healing? Do we all have the ability to speak in unknown languages? Do we all have the ability to interpret unknown languages? Of course not. And I, I, think, I think that's important. Of course not. It's not just a no. It's saying, of course not. It's, he's saying, so you should earnestly desire the most helpful gifts. Right. Yeah. So, and, it's, and then moving forward to chapter 14, verse 4, it says, A person who speaks in tongues is strengthened personally, but one who speaks a word of prophecy strengthens the entire church. And, uh, and then further on, it talks about how you should have. You should be eager to have the special abilities the Spirit gives, seeking those who strengthen the whole church. And mm -hmm. I think that's important to all of this because, to me, when I was gr growing up, I believed I had to speak in tongues and I had to do all of the spirits of the uh, Holy Spirit. Or that's at the Can wrong. I ask you another question? Why yeah. did you feel that? I felt. I guess to me, it felt like that's what I've been taught um, almost, because I felt like I had to. F fit all of these giftings right. and I'm, it may, I don't even know if it necessarily was taught that way it just that's how I perceived it right. and right. that's not true you don't you're not all going to have not everybody's going to have all the spirits of the, of the Holy Spirit that's not how I see that all giftings. the different gifts yeah, the yes. giftings that's yes. the word I was looking for giftings yeah. um and that's that gave me. But even though they could, yeah, they, you know, yeah. at any point you can operate, you right. know, with these gifts because it's a gift that He wants to give to us to help. You know, there's times that you may operate in the in the gift of wisdom to help give yeah. some some input into someone's life to help them. Yeah. Uh, you know, there there may be a time that you all operate. You know, a lot of people will say this too, and I know I kind of overtook this little no, uh, segment of this, but a lot of people will say uh, many times, "Well, I have the gift of healing." 
Mm-hmm. Well, it's it's not your gift. Yeah. It's the gift of the Holy Spirit that He is giving to you to allow you at that moment to operate in that. And so I I, I, I really shy away from that when people say, oh, I have the gift of it. Yeah. You're mm-hmm. not just operating sometimes just in that single gift. You may be more sensitive in that gift. That may be some of your personality of where you kind of operate or feel comfortable more mm-hmm. in that gifting. Uh, and so they, they, you maybe operate more often in that particular area of that, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but I believe the Holy Spirit at any moment, any time, if you need that particular gift to help encourage the body of Christ or to, to lead someone to salvation, you can operate in that gift yeah. if, with, with having the, the, the Holy Spirit Those. living mm-hmm. on the inside of you. So. Yeah, that's good. Mm-hmm. Do you have anything to add? Well, you know, the Holy Ghost is what uses you anyway and flows through you in mm-hmm. those gifts. Yeah. So well, I, I look at that. All those gifts is available for yes. me to be used through. Yeah. Now, will I be using all those gifts? Not necessarily. But does it mean I don't have the gift? No. Mm-hmm. It just means that I, when you're filled with the power of the Holy Ghost, when He wants to use you in one of those particular gifts, mm-hmm. are you available? Mm-hmm. Now, that's going to be the answer right there. Yeah. Am I available? Am I going to allow Him to flow through me in this particular gift? And so it, it, those gifts are available to any, yes. mm-hmm. any of us that's, that's asked this gift to come in our life. Yeah. We've got, we received the Holy Ghost. We're operating in the Holy Ghost through how? Through our prayer life. Mm-hmm. That, you know, a lot of people, I don't want them to think, I have to go out and be speaking in tongues. I have to go out and do all this. Out. Yeah. No, you do that at home. You get in your, your your private room or your prayer room or your truck or wherever you pr- do your praying. Mm-hmm. You build yourself up in that time through the Holy Ghost. And so when you are walking out, going someplace, and an individual may come up to you, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden the Spirit of the Lord will start flowing through you saying, I just feel like you need to need a hug today. You have no idea that that was the Spirit of the Lord flowing through you mm-hmm. to minister to that individual. What happened? The gift of the Spirit just used you yeah. in that particular gift of encouragement. Yeah. So I, I feel like there's a lot of kind of mis, the misunderstood. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't think that that it, it meant to be misunderstood. Right. Yeah. I feel like it. God is wanting us to know I've given you something a gift. I sent my son to die, not just for your salvation, yeah. but for you to have strength and power and the comforter to yeah. help you to witness to men and to give you the strength through the gifts of the Spirit to operate and help mm-hmm. others to come to know me. Mm-hmm. You know, the Scripture says, I'll be lifted up to all, to all men. You know, yeah. he, he will draw. Yeah. How does God draw people to him unless he's lifted up in our own personal life? So if we're not flowing in this Holy Ghost of, of love, mm-hmm. and we're not, which is and chapter that, 13, which is 13, and that is, yeah. that's, right in the that's middle a, of both of these talking about gift, the gifts. Man. And, and if you're not flowing in that, yeah. and the Holy Ghost is love, God's love, we're not flowing in that. We're not lifting Him up. We're not going to draw people to Him. Yeah. You know, and, and they're not going to want to come to, to Connie and, and for encouragement if I'm not walking in love. Right. Yeah. You know, and, but yeah. I, you know, I just, like I, I told you before, and we've talked about before, whenever my dad died, I didn't understand what comforter really meant. Mm-hmm. I knew it was a comforter. It was one of the gifts. And I knew Jesus said, I'm going to send you the comforter. I understood that part as I read the scripture. But when I was standing at my dad's grave, and I was so broken and going through such a deep deep depression because also my dad was just snatched from me and i was very angry and i shared it with you with god and with mm-hmm. dad for leaving me yeah. at that moment when i just cried out and i said god i'm so mad at you and i'm so mad at my dad i actually felt this comfort mm-hmm. come to me and i fell to my knees at my dad's grave and immediately a deliverance came to my life mm-hmm. but what happened was that comforter, the Holy Ghost, mm-hmm. had to come and comfort me because I was so wounded. Yeah. But had I not allowed this spirit to come into my life, a gift, that I wouldn't have that, that comforter come to me. Yeah. You know, so that that's why I feel like we need to realize this Holy Ghost, what's the purpose mm-hmm. of the Holy Ghost? Start seeking the purpose. Him. Start studying yeah, the Holy Ghost. Don't yeah. you know, when I was when I first 
one of the Holy Ghost, you know what I was seeking for? The tongues. Yeah, yeah. I was asking for the tongues. And oh my goodness, that was so wrong. Yeah. You know, I wasn't seeking Him, the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Now, as I've gotten older, I realize, start seeking the purpose of the Holy Ghost. Search it out. Mm -hmm. If I believe if those who are listening, if they have not received the Holy Ghost, if they start searching it out, the purpose mm -hmm. of the Holy Ghost, He's fire whenever He needs to burn stuff out of me. He is a comforter when I'm broken. He, he's a healer when, I'm, when I need healing. He's, he's my strength when I need strength to overcome. Yeah. He's everything that I need. But if you don't start seeking the purpose of the Holy Ghost, you're not going to be hungry for the Holy Ghost. You've yeah. got to know who He is yeah. and what He's about and why yeah. He's here. Yeah. Now, I think the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, the, all these gifts that we see that's associated with the Holy Spirit, is what, what people see and they're like, oh, I want that. You know, yeah. and don't realize everything else that the Holy Spirit, when we have yeah. Him in our lives, so much more. the benefits of, mm -hmm. of Him being in our lives right. uh, uh, contributes yeah. uh, to us. And so that's that's so important that we don't. Uh, I think growing up, I think a lot of times people was like, "Well, I just need the I want the Holy Spirit," and, and, and I don't feel like I have Him unless I'm speaking in tongues. And and that may come. I think the Holy Spirit will come. You know, with, with the speaking in tongues may come. That may be another gift that's added to you at some point, but just continue yeah. to seek uh, Him. And I know it's an evidence, you know, we see that in the Scripture where it's an evidence of, of Him being on the inside of us, of, of, of having this prayer language. And it's so important to have this prayer language. And I kind of want to get mm -hmm. back to that if we can about the prayer language of yeah. speaking in tongues. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's something that we, that we, that's a language that He gives to us when, when we receive the Holy Spirit in our lives. And uh, again, it's hard to explain that because you're like, I, it's not that I can speak it with a natural, yeah. you know, English language, but it's it's a heavenly language that we speak and we pray. Jude talks about it in Jude one and twenty that's building up yourselves by praying in the Holy Spirit. So when we pray in the Holy Spirit, uh, it's building up our spiritual man, and because mm -hmm. it's a direct line to heaven that we're that we're praying, and it's a language that God can only understand yeah. uh, at this time. And and a lot of people's like, well, that's a, that's crazy talk. You're it's biblical. It's so biblical. You see it all through the scripture. Paul talks about it here yeah. in First Corinthians the fourteenth. This to, to speak into tongues because you're speaking unto to God is what he says here. He says, yeah. "Speak not." Uh, you know, when you speak with prophecy or preaching or teaching the word, you're speaking unto men. But when you speak in this unknown tongue, you're speaking unto God. Yeah. And he says it very clear there in the scripture. There. And so it is that language that, that we speak. Uh, another reference. I don't have this reference right here on top of my head, where he talks about utterings and groanings. That when we come mm -hmm. to a place in our life that we don't know what to pray, we don't know how to pray, mm -hmm. that with, with spiritual utterings and, and groanings, we begin to speak and pray in this un, unknown language. And if you've never experienced that, it's so powerful. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's an undergirding strength yeah. that you can't even imagine that, that you're like, you know, I didn't know that this was available to me, you know, that I could have this type of strength of of when I don't know where to go, when I don't know what to pray, when I'm overwhelmed, it's kind of like David said, when my heart's overwhelmed, lead me to the rock. Well, Jesus said, well, I'm going to give you that rock, and, and it's going to be the Holy Spirit, that when you don't understand, when you're overwhelmed, begin to begin to just lean into the presence of the Holy Spirit and just let Him speak through you. Yeah. And it's, it's powerful. And that just undergirds us mm -hmm. and strengthens us. Yeah, that's good. Do you have anything else to add with that? Mm, that's good. That's really good. Um, that's really all I have to ask. <laughs> kind of, of questions about? Yeah. I, I, like I said, I think there's a lot of people that, that, that come from different doctrinal backgrounds. You know, we talked about, I think, this in a previous podcast, too, where Pastor Robert Morris wrote a book called The God I Never Knew mm -hmm. uh, that is a very good reference uh, to talk about the Holy Spirit. And, uh, you know, he come from a different doctrinal background. And up in his 20s, I think, in 1920, somewhere in there, he, he had heard about the Holy Spirit but didn't know really what the Holy Spirit was. And so I challenge people that may be coming from a different doctrinal background that you're like, I don't know about this Holy Spirit stuff. I don't know what this means. Get in the Word. Mm -hmm. It's in the Bible. Yeah. It, it, he is, and it's not an it. And I, I've said this previously. It's not. He's not an it. Mm -hmm. He is the third person of the Godhead. And Jesus said He wants to come and dwell among you and live in you and, and be a part of your life. And so I challenge you to go search out the Scriptures and 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 get this fullness yeah. of 
of the Godhead. Get this fullness of what God wanted us to have, to live in and walk in. And I'm not going to say it makes you a perfect Christian. Yeah. But and, and I think people think, well, they got the Holy Spirit. They're super. They're yeah. super Christians. No. 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 What What that means is 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 you've you are being sensitive to be led by the Spirit. You're allowing Him to operate into your life, and you're allowing because we can definitely quench the Spirit. The Bible talks mm-hmm. about that. I mean, we can definitely get in this walk where we're like, you know, I, I don't need the Holy Spirit or whatever. No, we need the Holy Spirit operating, and it's yeah. and it's that through your prayer, as you were saying, Sister mm-hmm. Connie, through our prayer life, through the Word, that that He will begin to operate in our lives, and and we become more sensitive to to being prompted by Him. Yeah. Uh, in a moment to use a word of knowledge or to be a discerning of spirits, whatever that gift is, the more that you develop that. And I, and I challenge people too in this area that, hey, this may be something new to you and you don't understand it. And you may misspeak. You may misspeak. You may misrepresent the Holy Spirit. He has been mis- misrepresented a whole lot in in Pentecostal realms and different d- doctrinal realms that, that that he's been misspoken of yeah. but 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 at times i say this you know you may do that at times because you just don't understand keep moving keep operating keep being sensitive in the mm-hmm. gifts of the holy spirit because you'll grow in those things yeah you'll begin to understand more and more of who he is and what he wants to do and operate in your life and just keep growing in that area it, it's like uh, even speaking in tongues you know when you talk about speaking in tongues you know it may, may not have come out that mm-hmm. first time yeah. um smooth at all it may just be an utterance it may just be one or two mm-hmm. syllables that you're that you may be speaking and but the more that you, uh, you operate in that and the more that you uh are sensitive and allow yourself to be used by the holy spirit that those things become more flu- fluent and it's like as a child yeah. I, when they start speaking yeah. a new language it's not yeah i i have a hard time you know understanding my grandson still sometimes today I'm like, what do you say? What do you say? <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. because he's learning the language. He's learning how to speak English. You know, same thing with us with the gift of tongues. Yeah. We may not understand it just yet. We're learning this language, and the Holy Spirit has given us this utterance to speak this. And so the more that you lean into that, the more that you are yeah. sense of that, and I want this because it's such a powerful gift to us yeah. to operate. And I think you just, the more you operate it, the more you get fluent mm. uh, in these things. So. The more you lean into the Holy Spirit, the more the giftings come. Mm-hmm. To, uh, I agree to with that point, too. Yes, to a point. To a point. point, yeah. point yes. Yeah. Yes. It's it, it, as as needed. As, as that needed. gift is needed. The more you lean into Him, the more you're open to all yeah. the gifts. Yes. Yeah. And as it's needed at that particular moment, He will use you that way. But I want to kind of add to this too that the, those that are listening that may be mm-hmm. young, yeah. I'm not saying young, you know, newborn Christians, mm-hmm. and they're not quite understanding what we're talking about about the Holy Ghost. I just want to encourage them, and, and, and you too, Eddie, because you said you've been see, searching this. Get in the Word and yeah. just seek God. Mm-hmm. Just say, and this is how I did it. God, I want everything you have for me. Yeah. Everything in this Word that is for me. I want it. You show me, and you teach me, and you help me. And it, I feel like the more we get closer to God, mm-hmm. He's going to start revealing well, Addie, you need the Holy Ghost, or Addie, you need you need to lean in this area a little more. And as you lean in this area a little more, something's going to break, and it's going to open you up to be able to mm-hmm. receive the Holy Ghost or or something else. Yeah. But the more you start seeking God, I, to me, that's the main one you need to be seeking for right. yeah, is God. Yeah. The more you start seeking God, when I first got saved, that's all, and I still do that to this day. When I wake up, you know, God, I, I love you. My, my first words, what can I do for you today, God? Where do you want me to go? What would you have me to say? Where would you have me to read? I'm seeking Him. Mm-hmm. And then He leads me to what else I need to seek or opens me up through the Word. Connie, you need the Holy Ghost. or yeah. Connie, you need, to, you need to let up on this little area right here in your life because this is going to hinder you receiving the Holy Ghost. Or, yeah. So when you start seeking God and putting God first, getting in His Word and opening up your mind and your heart to God, mm-hmm. allow Him to talk to you. And sometimes when He speaks to you, you're not going to like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. 
I, I'm just going to be honest. Some, some of the things he spoke to me, I didn't like it. But that was a hindrance for me to re, to, to receive what I was asking for, yeah. was whatever you have for me, God, I want what's in this word. And the Holy Ghost was one of his promises to give me. Yeah. But I couldn't receive it until there were some things I had to come to the knowledge of. Yeah. So, I, I, you know, for the young Christians that are out there that are, are wanting to know more about this, get in the word. Seek God. And if you want to know the Holy Ghost, find scriptures on that and mm -hmm. really dig deep in those scriptures. And God will open those up to them and they'll start seeing and be illuminating to them like it has, like you saying it done mm -hmm. to you. And it's, it's creating a hunger. Yeah. Uh, okay, I see now, God. I see I had a, I misunderstood this. Now I'm mm -hmm. seeing what it really means. Mm -hmm. Now I'm really wanting this. I really want to, I want to experience this because you started seeking them. Yeah. And so I, I just feel like if we would start doing that, oh, you know, those that are wanting it, start seeking Him, not just for the Holy Ghost, you know, and like yeah. I said, well, don't don't seek the tongues. You need to seek the purpose of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. But if we start seeking, even me, that I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, I am still seeking God mm -hmm. yeah. for more. Yeah. Because there is so much more out there that I don't have that's in this Word. Yeah. So it's not just the Holy Ghost that I need. I need more of God. Yeah. And the more I seek God, the more He's going to open up to me. Connie, this is what you need. Because tomorrow you're fixing to face something that you're going to need this Holy Ghost to give you the strength today to mm -hmm. be able to fight tomorrow. Yeah. So that's the importance. That's the purpose of the Holy Ghost. Because you don't know what you're going to face tomorrow. Mm -hmm. yeah. And whenever you're seeking God and you're praying in the Spirit, like, we, like Pastor was talking about, and you're building yourself up, you don't know. Mm -hmm. Come tomorrow. So God's going to bring to your remembrance. You remember that prayer, that scripture I gave you yesterday? Quote it. Yeah. And then I'll start quoting it. And then I'll start feeling some strength. Because sometimes it doesn't come immediately, and sometimes it does. The majority it does not. I still have to mm -hmm. keep fighting. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's the purpose of the Holy Ghost. And So seek God. Yeah. Seek God. Ask Him. Don't be afraid to ask Him. What is it that you have for me in this word? I want it. And then don't be afraid to go after it. Yeah. You know, once yeah. he reveals it to you, like he has you. Just receive it. Man, yeah. go yeah. after it. Yeah. Open up. Here I am, God. Give it yeah. to me. I'm mm -hmm. ready. Yeah. You know, just accept what he has for you because it's a gift. Mm -hmm. And he wants all of us to have that gift. Yeah. But it's not just a gift for me. It's a gift to help edify Everyone. Yes. Yeah. outside. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's help me, mm -hmm. but it's a gift, and 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 that's what we need to look at. The Holy Ghost is is a gift to help us, but it's a gift to help build the kingdom, yeah. help build the church, help build Him up. It's a gift to reach out, yeah. because when the disciples were filled with the Holy Ghost, what's the first thing they did? They went and preached, mm -hmm. and, and we started telling them about this man about yeah. Jesus. It gave them the boldness to go out and preach the Word of God. Yeah. They didn't stay in that room and kept it to themselves. They went out. Yeah. They became witnesses. And that's what the Holy Ghost wants you and I, to become witnesses mm -hmm. for Him and go out and yeah. share the good news. Dad preached a message years ago. Uh, Jesus went up, the Holy Spirit came down, and the church went out. Oh, I like that. And yeah. Uh, yeah. that's exactly the, the, the plan of God and that, that whole purpose of that. That, you know, Jesus said, I'm, it's expedient that I go. Holy Spirit's going to come. And then that, that coming of the Holy Spirit is for the church to go out mm -hmm. and to do what we need to do uh, as followers and believers of Christ. So. Right. Mm -hmm. that's, that's good. good. Okay. Do you have anything else to add? Or any, no, other, no. any other knowledge of wisdom? I mean, there's a whole lot. No, there's a whole so lot much. of it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Maybe more than we know <laughs> yeah. of things. But this is just, you know, this is from our experience of, mm -hmm. of what we've experienced in growing in the things of God. And and again, I, I, I don't want to, uh, from my perspective, come and say, okay, this is what I was raised in. This is why I believe that. Yeah. I had to come to the knowledge of this myself. Right. I had to come to a place that, okay, you know, this, this is what the, the working of the Holy Spirit is in my life. And, and when you come to that knowledge and that revelation of that, man, it's so powerful. And, mm -hmm. and I just, I just you know, sometimes people don't know about these gifts. Yeah. They don't understand the gifts, that, and they're, they're available. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we've got, when Anybody, we come to the yeah. knowledge of that, I'm, I'm like you, I want everything that God I has do. for me. I, I mean, you know, if, yeah. if it's available, I want it. You know, mm -hmm. why, why am I holding back on this, you know? Yeah. I think again. I think people are afraid of the supernatural, and God is a God is a spirit, 
Mm -hmm. And so these supernatural things, because it's beyond our control, I can't control yeah. that. I can't control the Holy Spirit. I can't control God. Yeah. And so when I when when I'm in this place that I'm like I got to be in control, that's when it's difficult. And I think right. that's what hinders a lot of people from receiving the gift of the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit mm -hmm. is that they they like oh I still want to be in control. Well, no, yeah. it's yeah. it's it's allowing yourself. And not saying that again that he can is going to control you like some robot no. or make you do something you don't want to do. It's not. It's when you allow him to operate through you, and yeah. and when you when you yield yourself, I guess is, is the correct way I want to say that. When you yield yourself to the Holy Spirit, He mm -hmm. wants to operate in your life, and that gift wants to operate in your life, and it's so beneficial to you, and not only to you, but to the to the body of Christ. And yeah. it's not just to be used in the house, in the church. Right. Yeah. It's to be used everywhere we go. Uh, and and uh, operating in every area of our lives, and so wherever we work, wherever we uh, shop, whatever we do, th this is where the Holy Spirit wants to work. It it does operate in the church, yeah. uh, you know, in 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 the gifts of tongues. You know, that's a personal prayer language that He wants to operate in your life, mm -hmm. uh, in your in your personal prayer time. You know, right. because if if you just are going around speaking in tongues, people don't understand what you're saying. You know. Yeah. Paul talks about that a lot in, in the 14th chapter. So it's yeah. important that we use these gifts correctly too, and don't misrepresent the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. he, we can, and we misrepresent Christ a lot too. We even in our walk with God, at times you know we, I've misrepresented Him, and and God, I for, ask you to forgive yeah. me of that. And we can misrepresent the Holy Spirit if we're not careful. So yeah. so we we need to be careful how we operate in these things and, and make sure that we are operating. Uh, uh, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit and, and operating in God yeah, in these things. so yeah. Speaking of that, on verse 15, I believe. No, that's a lie. I just told a lie. I'm sorry. Verse 5 <laughs> of verse chapter five. 14 okay. in First Corinthians. She her glasses too. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, Paul says, I wish you could all speak in tongues, but even more, I wish you could all prophesy. For prophesy, or prophecy is greater than speaking in tongues unless someone interprets what you are saying so the whole church will be strengthened. Right. So I think that went along with what you were saying. Yeah, it mm -hmm. does. Yeah, yeah. So, we're, mm -hmm. so we get just like I say, we need to, to operate correctly in these in these gifts that he gives us too yeah. as well. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, that's all I've got. Does anybody want to pray us out? Do you want to pray us out? You, you can. Give me a prayer. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for everything that you've made available to us and the gift of the Holy Spirit that you said that, that when you leave, uh, that you're going to send him to us and we thank you for that gift and we receive him into our lives and we thank you for the operation of the Holy Spirit of, of bringing us to salvation and bringing us to, to a place of knowledge of, of who you are uh, and your word says that he will not speak anything against you but it'll all be your will and Father we, we pray today God that, that we operate and we function and we receive everything that you have for us and we, we thank you for this gift we thank you for what you're doing in us and through us through the gift of the Holy Spirit and 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 we just honor you in that today and we just thank you for this conversation that we've had today and we pray God that you'll use this conversation Lord to minister to someone to to for someone to come into the fullness of who you are and what you want to do in their lives and we just pray all these things and do all these things in your name Jesus Christ amen, amen. amen.